starting over. JD Nigel, Word of Truth. Um, fluorescent Colorado. World famous. <laughs> Colorado Springs. Pikes Peak. Area of Colorado. Um, so I'm here. For, this is my last day, but I enjoyed it. The time I got to stay here with my son. Um, let me open that. I think I'm gonna sit down. Yeah, that's a better. All right. Good morning, believers. Good morning, Israel. It's your brother JD Nigel, Word of Truth. Um, all praise is honor and glory to the Most High Heavenly Father, the only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, it feels like I might have a tick. That's interesting. It feels like something's uh, probably just got scratched by something. Oh. Oh. Probably just got scratched by one of the dogs. That's odd. I have something really painful in the back of my leg. Uh, it feels like it might be a tick. Hmm. Very interesting. Oh. Okay, well. <laughs> um, Heavenly Father, bless my brothers and sisters who hear this message. Um, give them strength and comfort in these last days. Amen. So I, was, I wanted to go into this. By the way, Moto X, um, I wasn't able to read your comment. I'm, I've been busy here, so I'm sorry if I don't, I didn't. I noticed that you left a, a comment, but um, I didn't get a chance to read it. So, um Hopefully it wasn't anything important that you wanted me to mention, but, um, or anything that I went off on. I hope I didn't, um, offend you or, um, piss you off in any way. <laughs> Let me get a drink of coffee here before I get going. Oh, that's good coffee. Um, so this Judas Iscariot moment was a very important teaching lesson about the difference between spiritual thought and carnal thought. See, you know, the, the whole thing with regeneration and the idea that we're spiritual beings that last that go on and on. Um, we're all going to go on and on, but the question is where you're going to go on and on at, and, and what is your pr trajectory going to be? Okay, if you know what I mean, are you going to, your projection, where are you going to project yourself to, or tra traject your we're all moving through space and time right now, but when we become spiritual beings, we're going to have a much different um, existence. So I'm not going to go too much into that, but you know what I'm saying. There's going to be a different, there's the dimensions are going to be a lot different. It's not going to be um, <laughs> trees and trucks and fences and, you know, it's going to be a lot different. But anyhow, back to um, Judas Iscariot. So I was thinking about it again this morning because um, these black Hebrew Israelites, these guys really have uh, missed the mark by by a mile. They're, see, and that's, and that's why Christianity and religion in general is... Um, 
deceiving and and hurtful a lot of times is because we don't understand the full meaning of what it means to be biblical and spiritual. The Bible is very spiritual. And if you try and start looking at it as a um, carnal, physical thing, you're going to run into a lot of problems. So I'm going to try and get going on this because I'm just going around in circles so far. So the points I was thinking about as far as Judas Iscariot, you know, the Bible says Jesus told his, told the Pharisees when they were coming against him, he said, um, my servants, if this was, if this was my kingdom, my servants would fight. And so when you go back to the point where um, Peter or whoever it was that cut off the ear of the, the soldier and Jesus said, here, let me help you. And um, told him, don't put your sword away. We're not fighting. Um, what Judas Iscariot is showing is that no matter what Jesus asks of us, and if we read the Bible, it says they're going to hate us. They're going to come against us. And we, we stick together. We're better together, especially Israel. Israel has to, and that's what pisses me off so much about these black Hebrew Israelites. They do not know that they're supposed to be setting they don't understand the example they're supposed to be setting for the whole world. We didn't come just for Israel. The reason Israel is here was to be an example onto the nations. And what did we do? We became like the nations. We were supposed to be different. We were supposed to be set apart. We were supposed to be kinder. We were supposed to be smarter. We were supposed to stay away from how they acted. So if if these guys are acting like street corner niggas, that's not the way we want to act. We don't want to be fighting on the streets. We don't want to be out on the streets yelling at people. But besides that, the other point I wanted to make was um, when Jesus told... Uh, he told John, whoever I dip the sop in and hand him the bread after the sop, he's going to be the one to betray me. <coughs> so I can. I, I love that word, even though it's that fucking voodoo language. I like that. And, uh, um, pardon me. It's, I got used to saying it, so don't, don't hold it against me. Um... What was I saying? Oh. When he dipped the sop and he handed it to him, it said, and I don't have my Bible, so I'm just going off what it, what I know it says. It says, and then Satan entered into him. So, Jesus made, he made Judas Iscariot the betrayer. He's the one that, he makes us do everything. So, when he handed him the sop, and Satan came into him. That was Jesus' business between him and Judas Iscariot and Satan and the Heavenly Father. They were all working together to fulfill Scripture. And if you can look at the Bible that way, if you can look at the Bible that way, sorry, I'm trying to whisper. I'm how, I must really yell in my videos because I'm having a hard time not <laughs> screaming I guess I have um, I have a hard time breathing that's probably why I yell sorry if my voice is irritating on my videos it's just the way old guy is um, so if we can look at things as the way Jesus looked at it um he dipped the sop and he handed it to him and Satan came into him. And then he told him, um, go quickly, do what you must do, but go quickly and do it. So he's saying, it's time. And then he told his disciples, it's time. 
So the other point I wanted to make about this whole Judas Iscariot thing, Judas Iscariot actually um, oh <laughs> these idiots GMS is trying to say that or whoever said it, one of these black Hebrew niggerites, these fucking idiots, were saying that, um, let me get a drink of coffee, get my thoughts together. They were saying Judas Iscariot was the head Pharisee in this and that. No, he wasn't with the Pharisees. He threw him, he threw back the coins and he went and hung himself. If he was with the Pharisees, he would have he would have rode to the end. He said when he threw the coins back, he said, I've betrayed an innocent man if I'm not mistaken. Right? So that's called repentance to heart, you fucking idiot. These guys, I don't know if they're for real. I don't know if these guys are real people, because they they're arguing points that, that don't make any sense. If you read the book, it says that he was very repentant. I mean, if he was so repentant that he killed himself, come on, Tahar, you fucking dumb fucker. I, I don't like that guy at all. I don't like the bar. I don't like these spiritual life lessons, guys. These guys are probably the most bugged out Bible cult I've ever seen in my fucking life. These guys know nothing spiritual. And I am so <sighs> vexed by the shit they say. It's just, it's ridiculous. What was the other nonsense thing that they were saying that I wanted to make a point about? Okay, let's go back to the, um, the 12 apostles. What did the 12 apostles do when they took Jesus at the time of Judas Iscariot? Do you know what they did? They fucking deserted Jesus. They ran off. They didn't stand up for him. They did not stand up for him. And they all took off. So, are we going to run off? Are we going to stand up for him? Are we going <laughs> to... This is one of those lessons where... What... What would have Jesus preferred? He probably would have preferred to see his men at least stand in. Maybe something would have been different if they would have said, that's our Lord, that's our master, that's our, that's our brother. Don't hurt our brother. Our brother has done nothing to you. No one, no one. See, you, people think betrayal is just going against somebody but betrayal is also not standing up for somebody and that's one of the bigger lessons that you have to understand here because um, I have been one of those people that hardly anyone has ever stood up for me and I'm a good man I'm a good man I really am I have good kids I have good morals. I am fair with people. I'm generous. I'm loving. I'm understanding. I listen. And so what Jesus wants, he wants us to, to listen. What is he really saying? If you don't want to betray someone, then stand up for them when they're in trouble. Stand by their side till the end. That's, that's loyalty. <laughs> Do you understand? Okay, I don't want to make this long because it takes a long time for these videos to download, but believe me, family, believe me, brothers and sisters, if you really want to learn the Bible and you really want to learn about my brother, stick, stay with me. There's things that I have for you that are precious. And it might mean the difference between the white gate and the narrow gate. So this is J.D. Nyjah, Word of Truth, coming to you from Colorado. 
I'll talk to you tomorrow. Enjoy the lesson. Moto X, hang in there, buddy. Whatever the issue was, just think about it. And uh, I'm glad you're still here. I love you, believers. I love you, subscribers, new subscribers, old subscribers. If you're new to the channel, join us. We, we do this just about every day. <laughs> every day we talk about God in the Bible. All right. Amen. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.